Greetings, Pokey fans! Michael here, and something that's been around since Pokemon got started was two versions coming out at the same time. The two versions are nearly identical, but they do have some distinct differences, primarily in which Pokemon you can find in the wild. At some point or another, virtually everyone who's played a Pokemon game has had to choose between one version or the other. Today, I will be going through the version pairs and telling you which version I believe to be the better one to pick, based primarily on the version exclusive Pokemon, since for most games, that's what makes the biggest difference. One big thing I have to clear up first though are the third version enhanced versions, specifically Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, and Platinum. These are often better than the originals because they have more things in them. They're called enhanced versions for a reason. Therefore, in most cases, these enhanced versions end up being the de facto choice. They're the same game as the first two, but with more stuff in it. When choosing which Sinnoh game to play, virtually everyone picks Platinum because it's the same game, but with way more Pokemon available. However, simply saying the enhanced version is the best for every situation where one exists would make for a pretty boring video. So I'm choosing to ignore them for the sake of making this video more interesting. I'm gonna look at it with the lens of the two games have just come out and the enhanced version hasn't happened yet. Also, one other thing I need to clear up first is that this video will only be covering the first four generations. I originally intended to have all the generations involved, but the video was gonna end up way too freaking long, oh my god. So I'm splitting it into gens one through four in this video and gens five through eight in an upcoming sequel that when it's out, I will put it in the cards. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel cause apparently like 60% of my watch time comes from non-subscribers. Come on people, subscribe, you hurt me. And let's dive in to the best version to pick in the first four generations. First is Gen 1 choosing between red and blue. Now, of course, yellow does exist and yellow is the best of the three because it has all three of the starters, plus Charizard can actually learn fly, but we're just focusing on red and blue. And to my knowledge, the only difference between the two of them is a couple in-game trades that don't really impact much, if anything, and then of course, the version exclusive Pokemon. The red exclusives are Ekans, Arbok, Oddish, Gloom, Vileplume, Mankey, Primeape, Growlithe, Arcanine, Scyther, and Electabuzz. The blue exclusives are Sandshrew, Sandslash, Bellsprout, Weepin' Bell, Victory Bell, Meowth, Persian, Vulpix, Ninetales, Pinsir, and Magmar. So which group is better? Well, let's go through them step by step. First is Arbok versus Sandslash. They both have garbage level up movesets, but actually similar TM move pools. Sandslash gets more moves for its type though, and the ground type is far more useful than poison in generation one. Add on Sandslash's superior attack stat, and it's clear that Sandslash is better. Next is Vileplume versus Victory Bell. These Pokemon are very similar, but with two big differences. The first being their stats. Victory Bell has a better base stat total under the Gen 1 stat system. The second difference is their moves. Vileplume got Petal Dance, which behaves the same as it does now, but with only 70 base power, and Victory Bell got Razor Leaf, which is the same as it is now. Only 55 base power, but a high crit rate. In my opinion, Petal Dance is a much better move than Razor Leaf now, but back then when it was only 70 base power, they were more on par with each other. Therefore, since their main moves are about equal, but Victory Bell's stats are better, I'm giving this one to Victory Bell. Next is Primeape versus Persian. Primeape's fighting typing and better attack may make it seem like it's the superior pick, but Persian is actually a more effective battler, even being one of the best Pokemon in the entire Gen 1 competitive metagame. That's because in Generation 1, a Pokemon's chance to land a critical hit was defined by its base speed so faster Pokemon landed crits more often, and Persian is fast. Combine that with Slash, which multiplies a Pokemon's crit chance by eight, and that results in Persian landing a critical hit with Slash every time it attacks. It getting the stab boost from Slash makes it even more powerful, 
and it made it an extremely potent threat that did get walled by rock types, but it could also learn Bubble Beam to deal with that. Persian was a top tier Pokemon and Primeape was not, so Persian, definitely the better one here. Next is Arcanine versus Ninetales. Arcanine had better HP, attack, and defense, but Ninetales had better special and speed. In my opinion, this makes Ninetales the better pick, since all fire type moves fell under special in Gen 1. It could get stabbed from its highest attacking stat, while Arcanine could not. As an added bonus for Ninetales, Vulpix learns Flamethrower at level 35, while Growlithe learns it at level 50. That means you could safely evolve your Vulpix much earlier. Next is Scyther versus Pinsir, and for me, this one is a toss-up. They both had extremely similar stats and equally awful move pools, neither of them learning any bug type moves. I don't recommend using either of them in a Gen 1 game though, so they're kind of toss ups in both the sense that they're kind of equal, but also toss ups in the sense that you could just toss them up into the trash can because you really should not use them. Finally is Electabuzz versus Magmar. They have near identical stats and have nearly identical move pools, just swapping electric moves for fire moves and vice versa. They're obtained at the same point as soon as you get Surf. Therefore, the only comparable metric is their typing, and based on that alone, I have to give it to Electabuzz. Neither of them match up well against any of the gyms that come after getting Surf, but Electabuzz fares a lot better in the Pokemon League. It's good against most of Lorelei's team, then parts of Agatha's, Lance's, and your rival's teams. The only Pokemon in the entire league that are weak to fire are Lorelei's Jinx and your rival's Grass type. With all those comparisons done, the answer is clear. Blue is the better version to pick. Blue won all of the matchups, except for a toss up and one red victory. If you want the stronger version exclusives, play blue. Now on to generation two, choosing between gold and silver. Crystal is of course the third enhanced version that is probably better, but actually I'm not entirely sure because it doesn't have Ampharos and that upsets me. The gold exclusive Pokemon are Mankey, Primeape, Growlithe, Arcanine, Spinarak, Ariados, Gligar, Teddy Ursa, Ursaring, and Mantine. The silver exclusives are Meowth, Persian, Vulpix, Ninetales, Ladyba, Ladian, Delibird, Fanpy, Dawnfan, and Skarmory. The first two comparisons are between Gen 1 Pokemon and are actually the same pairs as in Gen 1, but the results flip. For Primeape versus Persian, Primeape is now better than Persian. Persian lost its guaranteed crit strategy due to changes in how critical hits work, and the fighting type became a lot better due to the additions of the Dark and Steel types. For Arcanine versus Ninetales, Arcanine now wins. In Gen 1, Ninetales got the win for having the superior special stat, meaning that Ninetales effectively had 100 in both special attack and special defense. But now due to the system change, its special attack has been dropped down to 81. Meanwhile, Arcanine had effectively 80 in both special stats before, but now its special attack is 100. Ninetales base stat total dropped 19 points, while Arcanine's grew by 20, resulting in an enormous base stat total discrepancy of 50 points. It doesn't even matter that all fire moves are still special attacks. Arcanine now has the higher special attack and an even higher physical attack. It's just miles stronger than Ninetales. The choice isn't even close anymore. The first comparison of new Pokemon is Ariados versus Ladian. Neither are particularly impressive Pokemon, meaning they suck, but Ariados is better. That's because Bug, Poison, and Flying type moves are all physical moves at this point. Ariados has a solid base 90 attack, while Ladian's is a useless base 35. Next is Gligar versus Delibird. Gligar is not a good Pokemon due to mediocre stats and a poor move pool, but Delibird is even worse. Its base stat total of 330 makes it completely useless, so Gligar gets the win here. Next is Ursaring versus Dawnfan. Both have similar stats, so that's not an impact. Ursaring gets access to strong stab moves earlier, but they're normal type, meaning it's not gonna have as good offensive capabilities since it can't deal super effective damage. Dawnfan is a ground type and gets the incredible Earthquake, but not until it's level 49. I've decided to make this one a toss-up. Ursaring is better earlier, 
Dawn Fan is better later on, but you have to wait a while for it to be any good. I think those two differences make them about even. Finally is Mantine versus Skarmory. They have the same stats, just with physical and special sides swapped around a bit. Both have meh level up movesets, but much better TM movesets. The main comparison is their typing, and I have to give this to Skarmory. Mantine has two weaknesses, one of them is four times, one immunity, and five resistances. Skarmory has two weaknesses, two immunities, and nine resistances. Steel flying is simply much better typing than water flying. Plus, it's nice to have more steel type options. No one really needs more water type options. Actually, there's one more comparison. Ho-Oh versus Lugia. Now these two are not technically version exclusives because you get one and then get the other later in the game after you've done a lot of stuff and it's like level 70. So while they're not technically version exclusives, one of them you get a hell of a lot earlier than the other one. So it still matters which choice you go with because it's one you'll get to use to take on the league and stuff like that. The two of them of course have the same base stat total but Ho-Oh is more offensive while Lugia is more defensive. Ho-Oh's move situation is better though, since its signature move is Sacred Fire, not overlapping with Fly if you choose to teach it that. Lugia's signature move is Arrow Blast, which does overlap with Fly. And in order to teach it a psychic move at a reasonable level, you need a TM. Ho-Oh has three weaknesses, one of them four times, one immunity, and five resistances. Lugia has five weaknesses, one immunity, and three resistances. This to me makes Ho-Oh's typing better. I'm giving Ho-Oh the win here. They're of course both incredible Pokemon, they're legendary Pokemon, but Ho-Oh's better typing and better signature move situation give it the win here. It's really annoying to me that you have to jump through so many hoops just to have Lugia learn a psychic move. So where does this put each game? Gold has Primeape, Arcanine, Ariados, Gligar, and Ho-Oh. Silver has just Skarmory and then Earthring versus Dawnfan was a toss up. Therefore, Gold is the clear winner here. Before I move on to generation three, I wanna real quick tell you about a new project I've started over on my second channel, MNJTV Plays, that I'm really excited about, and it's called MNJTV's Metronome League, AKA the MML. In short, it's a Pokemon battling league of only metronome battles featuring eight teams not associated with any particular person. So you can all just pick whichever one you wanna root for rather than just rooting for me. If you wanna learn more, I have a video over on my second channel explaining all of it and introducing it and stuff like that. And I'm also selling shirts for all of the eight teams. So if you have a favorite and you wanna pick up a shirt to support it, the link is in the description below and the shirts should also be displayed below the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to MNJTV Plays if you haven't so you don't miss any of the MML battles or any of my other fun gameplay content that I do over there. But now, back to picking versions. We're on Gen 3, starting with the Hoenn Games, Ruby versus Sapphire. Of course, there's Emerald. It is better than Ruby and Sapphire, but we're not talking about it. Ruby's exclusives are Seedot, Nuzleaf, Shiftree, Mawile, Zangoose, Solrock, Groudon, and Latios. Sapphire's exclusives are Lotad, Lombre, Ludicolo, Sableye, Saviper, Lunatone, Kyogre, and Latias. Actually, Latios and Latias are not technically version exclusives, since you can catch the one that does not normally spawn in the wild in your game if you have the Eon Ticket, an event exclusive item that is no longer available, making them effectively version exclusives now. The first comparison is Shiftry versus Ludicolo, and Ludicolo is easily superior here. Ludicolo has a far wider move pool and better stats. Yes, Shiftry has great physical attack, but dark and grass moves were special in Gen 3, so it didn't get to take advantage of them. Additionally, as I discussed in my best HM mule in every game video, Lombre is an incredible HM mule for the Hoenn games. Even if you're not using Ludicolo on your main battling team, having access to Lombre is a great perk. Next is Mawile versus Sableye. Both have equally horrible stats, but Sableye gets the edge for two reasons. The first is its typing, not actually having weaknesses at this point in time since Fairy didn't exist yet. The second reason is move pool. Sableye gets lots of dark and ghost type moves. Mawile 
literally doesn't learn a single steel type attack. Sableye is bad. Mawile is useless. Next is Zangoose versus Seviper, and Zangoose is the easy victor here. While they have the same base stat total, Zangoose's stat spread is much more advantageous, giving it great attack and speed compared to Seviper's split investment in the two attack stats. Zangoose also has a wider move pool, and Normal is a much better type than Poison in this gen due to being resisted by less and having fewer weaknesses. Next is Solrock versus Lunatone. These two have very similar stats, with Solrock being more invested in the physical side and Lunatone in the special side. This means Solrock makes better use of the rock typing, while Lunatone makes better use of the psychic. Their move pools are also very similar, so I'm calling this one a toss up. Next is Latios versus Latios, and these Pokemon are nearly identical in most everything. Super similar move pools, near identical stats, with Latios being more offensive and Latios being more defensive, and both are found post-game, therefore not having much of an impact on your playthrough. Both are excellent, and I couldn't find any factors that would make one top the other, so this is another toss-up. Finally is the big one, the box art difference Groudon versus Kyogre. Now both of these Pokemon are obviously incredible. Amazing stats, amazing move pools, amazing weather strategies. They're both just excellent across the board, and therefore I can't pick one or the other based on their attributes that are just a part of them. They're both equally good. However, I can pick one based on how they match up against the rest of the Hoenn games. For Wallace, Kyogre is better, since it can resist all the water attacks and fire off 100% accurate thunders if you teach it the move. They fare about equally against Sydney and Phoebe, but then Kyogre is better against Glacia due to not being weak to ice or water. It's better against Drake due to being able to learn ice type moves. And finally, it's better against Steven due to having super effective coverage for five of Steven's Pokemon if it brings Thunder, Ice Beam, and a Water move. Groudon only covers three of them with Earthquake and Eruption. Groudon does learn Solar Beam, which is great to have on it if the sun is up, and that would add coverage for Claydol, but it doesn't learn Solar Beam until level 65, and you'd have to use a TM on it to give it the move before you fight Steven, which would be a waste because it's gonna learn the move in like less than 10 levels. So both Groudon and Kyogre, incredible Pokemon, but Kyogre matches up against the late game better. This means Ruby got Zangoose, while Sapphire got Ludicolo, Sableye, and Kyogre, and then the Lottis and Space Rocks were toss-ups. Sapphire wins this matchup. Next is Fire Red versus Leaf Green, the first remix. These remakes, though, actually did not keep exactly the same version exclusives as the originals, and actually added a lot more of them. For Fire Red, they're Ekans, Arbok, Oddish, Gloom, Vileplume, Belossum, Psyduck, Golduck, Growlithe, Arcanine, Shelter, Cloyster, <sighs> Electabuzz, Elekid, Scyther, Scizor, Wooper, Quagsire, Murkrow, Quillfish, Dillabird, Skarmory, and Attack Form Deoxys. Okay, we're halfway there. Are you starting to see why I had to split this into two halves? Leaf Greens were Sandshrew, Sandslash, Bellsprout, Weepin' Bell, Victory Bell, Vulpix, Ninetales, Slowpoke, Slowbro, Slowking, Staryu, Starmie, Magmar, Magby, Pinsir, Azuril, Meryl, Azumarill, Mischievous, Sneasel, Remoraid, Octillery, Mantine, and Defense Deoxys. This is my new version exclusive Pokey Rap. Obviously, this is a lot. So to make things more reasonable, I'm not gonna talk about most of them. Look, for all the Johto Pokemon, except maybe the ones that evolved from Kanto Pokemon and then Deoxys, you can't get them till you beat the league. You can't use them on your main battling squad unless you wanna modify it substantially later. They have a much smaller impact on your playthrough and therefore, I don't think really should matter as much when selecting your version. This means I will only be looking at Kanto Pokemon you can get before the league. First is Arbok versus Sandslash, the same matchup as in Gen 1. Both still have pretty bad level up movesets with much wider TM movesets, and Sandslash still has better stats and the more useful ground typing. Like in Gen 1, Sandslash wins again. Next is Vileplume versus Victory Bell, and yes, Velossum is a thing, 
But again, you can't get it till after you beat the Ling, and also it's substantially worse than Vile Plume. Just use Vile Plume. Why did they make Blossom? They could have given Farfetch'd or something in Evolution instead. Like before, Vile Plume and Victory Bell's movesets are extremely similar, aside from Petal Dance versus Razor Leaf. However, due to the stat system change, both of them now have the same base stat total, with Vile Plume leaning more toward defense and Victory Bell more toward offense. This change actually benefits Vile Plume a lot more, since Victory Bell effectively got a massive nerf to its special defense. They now hit the same with their special moves, which are really all that matter since Poison was a terrible attacking type before the Fairy type showed up, so we don't really care about their Poison moves much. But Vile Plume takes hits much better. Vile Plume now gets the win. Next is Golduck versus Slowbro. Golduck has a slightly better base stat total with a more balanced spread, while Slowbro is more focused in bulk and attack power while being much slower. Surprise! Both have access to plenty of water moves, although you'd likely just go for Surf, but Slowbro has the added bonus of being a Psychic type. Despite all the nerfs that the Psychic type got between Gens 1 and Gens 2, it's still an extremely good type in a Kanto playthrough specifically. Due to the complete absence of Dark types, the very limited Ghost types that are also weak to Psychic, and the fact that the bug types were still overall pretty weak and had very bad moves. Therefore, Slowbro having the Psychic type gives it an edge over Golduck. Next is Arcanine versus Ninetales. Like in Gen 2, Arcanine now has far better stats and it gets the win. Next is Cloyster versus Starmie. Cloyster is Water Ice type with a base stat spread wildly in favor of defense, and Starmie has a near identical base stat total, but with much more balanced stats the best two of which are special attack and speed. Like with Golduck versus Slowbro, Starmie being a psychic type, massive benefit to it. So I'm giving it the win. I do think it's weird that both water psychic types were leaf green exclusives though. You would think one would be in one and the other would be in the other. Next is Electabuzz versus Magmar and their stats were impacted similarly to each other. Both of them receiving a buff to their special attack. They're both solid Pokemon just with different type focuses. So I'm once again giving the win to Electabuzz due to the electric type being more helpful late game, which matters since both of these Pokemon are found later. The final comparison for the Kanto Pokemon is Scyther versus Pinsir. And this comparison is much more one-sided this time around. Scyther gets Wing Attack and Fury Cutter as stab moves, which aren't great, but Pinsir literally gets no bug type moves in Fire Red and Leaf Green still. It's been two whole generations. Why didn't you give Pinsir a bug move? Also, as an added point in favor for Scyther, if you want to, after you beat the League, you can evolve it into Scizor, which has the same base stat total, but much better typing. So like, wow, super one-sided this one B. <laughs> I was talking about bugs and I said B. That was a complete accident. <laughs> so where does that leave us for Fire Red versus Leaf Green? Fire Red won with Vile Plume, Arcanine, Electabuzz, and Scyther. Leaf Green won with Sandslash, Slowbro, and Starmie, meaning Fire Red had more and therefore won by one matchup. However, honestly, I think the margin of victory for Fire Red is larger because Slowbro and Starmie are kind of just one Pokemon due to having identical typings and it's very unlikely that you will use both. If you go with Fire Red, yeah, you can't have a Water Psychic type, but you have more stronger team options. Now on to Gen 4, starting with the Sinnoh games, Diamond versus Pearl. Now, of course, there is Platinum, and of course, if you wanna play a Sinnoh game, play freaking Platinum. The Diamond and Pearl decks is just not good. <laughs> just didn't include most of the new Gen 4 evolutions, which was silly. So if you want to have a high quality Sinnoh playthrough, play Platinum. But for the sake of fun, we're gonna compare Diamond and Pearl. The diamond exclusives are Seal, Dugong, Scyther, Scizor, Murkrow, Honchkrow, Larvitar, Pupitar, Tyranitar, Puchiana, Mightyana, Auron, Leiron, Agron, Kecleon, Cranidos, Rampardos, Stunky, Skunk Tank, and Dialga. Kinda gave up on the rhythmic rap there at the end. My God, there's a lot. The pearl exclusives are Slowpoke, Slowbro, Slowking, Pinsir, Mischievous, Miss Magius, Houndour, Houndoom, Stantler, Sfeel, Celio, Walrein, Shieldon, Bastiodon, Glamiao, Perugly, and Palkia. Okay, I know this seems like a lot, because it is. However, most of these are post-game. 
And like I did with Fire Red and Leaf Green, post-game version exclusives matter a heck of a lot less. So for the sake of my sanity, I'm not caring about any of these version exclusives that you cannot get before the league. First is Honchkrow versus Miss Magius. Both are obtained relatively early, so can be used in one form or another for most of the playthrough. Honchkrow's stats make it an offensive monster, but it's held back by its speed and defenses. Miss Magius is faster and hits a bit less hard, but it's also frail on the physical side. I can't give either one an edge in the stat department, so instead I can do what I did for Groudon and Kyogre and see how well they match up against the major game battles. Murkrow and Honchkrow fare well against Gardenia, Maylene, Fantina, Aaron, and Lucian. Mistrevis and Miss Magius fare well against Maylene, Fantina, and Lucian. While Miss Magius has better defensive typing, Honchkrow has much better offensive typing, which a lot of times can also function as defensive typing in a lot of these big matchups. So while I think the stats on Honchkrow are a little wonky, its typing is pretty good for a lot of the playthrough, so I think it gets the win here. Next is Rampardos versus Bastiodon. Rampardos is pure rock with insane attack, good HP, and mediocre everything else, while Bastiodon is rock steel with incredible defenses and bad everything else. Because of these stat spreads, I'm giving the edge to Bastiodon. A massive attack stat, it's great, but it's not that great if you never have a chance to use it because you're too frail or too slow to get a hit off before dying. Bastiodon's defenses make it so it'll stick around for a while potentially even if it gets hit by a four times super effective move. And yes, it does have two four times weaknesses, but it also has a booty load of resistances. Next is Skunk Tank versus Perugly, and this one is not close. Skunk Tank is the clear winner. Not only does Skunk Tank have a substantially higher base stat total, but Poison Dark is better typing than normal. Both only have one weakness and one immunity, but Poison Dark has more resistances and can actually deal super effective stab damage. Skunk Tank wins by a large margin. Finally is Dialga versus Palkia. Both obviously have typical bonkers legendary stats and incredible defensive typings. At the time, Palkia only had one weakness and Dialga had only two, then resisting or being immune to 10 of the 17 types. So I think Dialga gets the edge in typing, but for moves, Palkia's Spatial Rend is better than Dialga's Roar of Time, in my opinion. Spatial Rend has a high crit ratio, and therefore a very solid chance to do more than Roar of Time without a recharge turn. Both are incredible Pokemon. Dialga, better in typing. Palkia, better signature move. Therefore, I think they're a toss-up. That leaves Diamond having Honchkrow and Skunk Tank, while Pearl has Bastiodon. Diamond gets the victory here, but seriously just play Platinum. Finally for this video is Heart Gold versus Soul Silver, and the version exclusives compared to the remakes didn't change that much. Heart Gold's exclusives are Mankey, Primeape, Growlithe, Arcanine, Spinarak, Ariados, Gligar, Gliscor, Mantike, Mantine, Fanpy, Donphan, Sableye, Baltoy, Claydol, and Kyogre. For Soul Silver, they are Meowth, Persian, Vulpix, Ninetales, Ladyba, Ladian, Delibird, Skarmory, Teddy Ursa, Ursaring, Mawile, Gulpin, Swalot, and Groudon. Ho-Oh and Lugia are once again not technically version exclusives, it's the same thing as before. Depending on which one you play, you get one of them way earlier, so I'll still be comparing them. Essentially, the version exclusive list for these games is the same as the originals, but with more Pokemon added on, and Ursaring and Donphan swapping. The reason for that is that in the original Japanese and Korean releases of Gold and Silver, Donphan was in Gold and Ursaring was in Silver. Yet for the international versions, they flipped it. Now that we're back in Heart Gold and Soul Silver though, they put it back to what it was originally in Japan. But now for the comparisons, many of which will be short since it's comparisons we've already done. For Primate versus Persian, Primate wins again. The fighting type is more useful than the normal type when Dark and Steel types are around. For Arcanine versus Ninetales, it's once again the same as Gens 2 and 3. Arcanine has way better stats. 
Plus, now Arcanine can use physical fire moves thanks to the physical special split, so its main attacking stat is now even higher. Ariados versus Ladian is closer now since Ladian can now use special bug and flying moves. Oh wait, no it actually can't. The only special flying move it can learn is Air Cutter, which isn't good and can also only learn it at like the Battle Frontier move tutor. So like, come on Ladian. That's enough for me to give Ariados the win for this one. Gligar versus Delibird is now a massively one-sided comparison. Once you get the national decks, you can turn Gligar into the very strong and incredibly handsome Gliscor, while Delibird is still totally useless. Mantide versus Skarmory is the same as before. Skarmory wins due to having better typing. Donphan versus Ursaring is once again a toss up. Despite Donphan appearing to get a ground move at an earlier level, magnitude at 19, it doesn't actually have access to that without a move reminder since it evolves from Fanpy at level 25 and Fanpy doesn't learn it. It'll be good once it has Earthquake, but again, that's pretty late. Ursaring will do big damage with Slash a lot earlier, so that evens things out. For Ho-Oh versus Lugia, Ho-Oh wins again for the same reason as before, having better access to good stab moves. Also, it's now even better than before since Sacred Fire is a physical move, allowing Ho-Oh to take advantage of its higher physical attack. For the remaining version exclusives, the Hoenn ones, I'm not gonna cover them. Like with a couple other instances, they're pretty much just post-game Pokemon that are Swarm, and they're not even that good a Pokemon anyways, so I just don't think they matter. But even if they did, and all of them went in Soul Silver's favor, Heart Gold is still winning. With Primeape, Arcanine, Ariados, Gliscor, and Ho-Oh under its belt, compared to Soul Silver's Skarmory, there simply aren't enough version exclusives left to give Soul Silver the win. So to summarize, the winners of this version exclusive competition are Blue, Gold, Sapphire, Fire Red, Diamond, and Heart Gold. I'm excited to see which versions win when part two comes out, and when it comes out, you will know if you are subscribed. Thanks so much for watching, and an extra special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon, who are helping support my channel independent of fluctuating YouTube ad rates. If you wanna help support me in the same way, the link is in the description below. If you wanna check out some more of my fun Pokemon content, I recommend these videos here, and don't forget about MML merch. All right, that's all I have for now, so till next time, big fans. Gotta catch them all.